So, so there are a couple of things you need to be uh, mindful of in this whole in this whole affair. The first is you know you don't want to make you you don't want your decrease to be too little because say for example if you if you are decreases too little say let me give you an example like this so suppose I draw a function like this suppose here's your function and here's your iterate you 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 take a very large step say and you go here but then the decrease is very little the decrease is just decrease in the function value is just this much then you take another step looks like a very large step again the decrease is not much the decrease is just this then a decrease this, then the decrease this, then the decrease this, 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 this. What is happening here? What is happening here is that although you are decreasing your function value at each step, your decrease is pro becoming progressively lesser. And now de it depends on the kind of iterate that you have designed. It could very well happen that your decrease by, by doing this, you in fact your decrease becomes so insignificant that you end up sort of stagnating at some so at this sort of level ne without actually reaching to the minimum here. So this so so the so the first thing you and one looks for when you want to choose the right sort of alpha in a line search. By the way, this is called line search because what we are doing is a unidimensional search along the direction along the line or along the direction p k. Okay. Yeah. So, the first thing one looks for when one does a line search is what is called sufficient sufficient decrease or sufficient descent. So, that means that when we are doing line search, the function must every step should at least give us a sufficient amount of descent. Now, how much is sufficient? So, is, is 10 to the minus 2 sufficient? Is 10 to the minus 3 sufficient? Is 10 is 10 sufficient? Is 1 sufficient? So, there is no there is no uh, we cannot put a number on what is sufficient, what is what is sufficient descent. So, what we can do is we can try we can try to define sufficient descent in terms of the in terms of the function uh, in terms of properties of the function itself okay so there there is an entire set of uh, there's a there's a there's a uh, there's a way of 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 defining uh, what amounts to sufficient descent uh, uh, which which i will tell you now which which basically tells you what sort of alpha ranges are good for you in terms of the in terms of the properties of the function itself okay so that so this leads us to what uh, conditions that are called wolf conditions so this is these are these are not the only known conditions but these are very popular so hence i'm um, hence i'm mentioning them so suppose once again let me draw draw a function like that so this I, what i'll plot now is just phi Okay, and here is my here is my alpha. Okay. So what I suppose we okay. So this is suppose my um sorry, let me make this a little smoother at this point. This is my alpha. Now remember, uh, we do not know the value here. Okay, we do not have a picture of this uh, this kind of a function here. What what we what we can try to do uh, is is, is uh, as I said, feel our way through. Okay, so let me also make this a little. 
So, one popular condition which is which are called wolf condition, uh, they, they impose the following. So, you, you look for an alpha. So, you look for the condition basically says look for alpha equal to alpha k. alpha k such that or rather uh, look for look for alpha such that We look for an alpha such that this uh, the the quantity on the left here, which is what's the quantity on the left? Well, the quantity on the left is simply phi of alpha. So we want phi of alpha to be less than equal to the quantity on the right. Now, what is this quantity on the right? Let's look at this in, uh, as a function of alpha. This is, this is actually a linear function in alpha. So let's call this L of alpha. So remember, we are fixing a k. Fix, fixed uh, for a fixed k we are looking for an alpha such that this inequality hold and let us see what this inequality is okay huh. by the way what is c1 here c1 is just some uh, c1 is a constant is some constant between 0 and 1 usually it's taken to be something like 10 to the minus 2 or some something like that so what is so c1 is some constant between uh, uh, between 0 and 1 and now for that fixed constant we are looking for an alpha that satisfies satisfies this. the the right hand side is a linear function of al is a linear function of alpha so if c1 was 1 what what would it what would this look like well this l of alpha then would would try to track in that case the slope in that case would try to track the slope would would be this sort of line it would be a linear approximation to uh, it would be the linear approximation to uh, to phi of alpha however because so this is this slope here is is phi dash the slope here is is phi dash alpha However, because c is between 0 and 1, what this does is it actually flattens the slope. It tends to make it uh, make it a little a little uh, a little more horizontal. So, L of alpha actually looks more like this. So, this is L of alpha. This line here, the red line that I have drawn that line is actually L of alpha and what is this condition saying? The condition is saying that we should look for an alpha such that the function phi lies below L of alpha. So, the acceptable alpha according to this condition then become this interval and this interval. these become the acceptable values of alpha. Now, if I just simply, so if I impose this condition effectively what it is saying is well do I am going to accept any alpha once uh, if my, if the, the way I impose this condition is it says that I am going to accept my alpha once, once this inequality here, once the wolf condition here is satisfied. Now, the pro, what this does is it does one, the one good thing it prevents regions like these, it prevents regions like this green region. If you look at this green region, what is happened here is that the uh, in this green region what is happened is that the function has, has it, you have come to the point where the function is now increase has, has is certainly increasing and it makes no sense to pick uh, that large an alpha. 
right. So, in, in other words, if if the um, yeah, so it, what it does is it at least makes sure that you are not you you aren't taking uh, taking too large an alpha. So you aren't taking too large a step so that you over uh, so that uh, to such a large step that you your function then starts going into an increasing load, increasing regime. So in that in that sense, it's a it, this is actually useful uh, that it it prevents this green region. However, it does not also pre it does still does not guarantee that you will be taking uh, where you can you will not be taking very small steps. Like for instance, uh, if you look here, this you know you these these little little steps that are close to alpha equal to zero, these are also uh, these are also still acceptable acceptable values of alpha. So if it could well be that these you know your your algorithm will come back to you with uh, you know if um, based on the way you are actually searching for alpha it may well be that it will come back to you with with an alpha that is too small say uh, some alpha here this green point that I am talking right. So, to prevent that to, to make sure your alpha is not too large, but at the same time is not too small you actually you need another condition. So, another condition which is imposed in this sort of way. So, this this condition says f of x k plus alpha p k transpose p k is greater than equal to c 2 transpose f of x k transpose p k, where now c 2 is another constant that is between C one and one, okay, and C one is the constant that that we have used above. Now, what uh, what is the meaning of this? Why why does this make sense? So the left hand side. What is the left hand side here? So this condition is effectively. Uh, let, let's try to first intuitively understand what this condition is doing. This condition is trying to prevent these kind of uh, this sort of extremely small steps. So, the way to prevent these extremely small steps is what by uh, the way it is doing it is by saying I would like my curvature to be sufficient. I want to get to a point where the curvature is sufficient. Okay. Now, why does uh, how is this uh, condition capturing curvature? Well, what it is doing is it is you look at what is the left hand side here. The left hand side is actually the left hand side here is is the derivative of phi at alpha. And what is the right hand side? The anybody? Yeah. So, what is the right hand side? Well, the right hand side is the derivative of phi at 0. So, what this this condition is actually doing is that it is asking that the derivative of phi at alpha should be at least c 2 times the derivative uh, derivative the initial uh, initial derivative which is uh, which is phi dash of 0. So, alpha equal to 0 is this point. So, so what it is basically saying is that the curvature that you get for the uh, for the acceptable uh, the acceptable alpha should be such where the curvature is at least c 2 times the initial curvature or the initial uh, the uh, or the slope should be at least c 2 times the initial slope. Now, why does this make sense? Well, so suppose if phi dash alpha was negative was uh, uh, suppose phi dash alpha was ex, uh, was negative ok. Now, if phi dash or or very uh, if phi dash alpha is is negative, then this condition will not. If 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 phi dash alpha is you know say strongly negative, that means it's in that case phi dash alpha is going to be less than phi dash zero. If it's strongly negative, means it's much less than phi dash zero. Then in that case, this condition would not be satisfied, and it would uh, you would be looking for an alpha that uh, you would be looking for an even greater alpha. So, when phi dash alpha is is strongly negative, it effectively is alluding to the fact that you could decrease the function even further because your phi dash alpha is negative. 
if the, and if you are if if the function can be decreased even further then you may you know it makes no sense for uh, for you to settle for uh, for the alpha that you have already you would want to search even further and get an even better decrease right so so when phi dash alpha is is less than phi uh, phi dash 0 uh, this this condition will not be satisfied so it would it would ask you to increase uh, it would ask you to uh, you know search further to get an even better alpha because there is scope for an even better alpha right so uh, on the other hand if phi dash uh, if phi dash alpha is positive uh, one usually has that phi dash alpha is uh, phi dash of 0 that means this initial one this one is usually negative right because you are you you are getting to you you are choosing a direction in which your your function decreases so this quantity is usually negative and so if phi dash alpha itself is positive then this condition is satisfied and or or even if mildly negative this condition would be satisfied because it 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 is a, it is pointing to the pointing to the um, uh, to the case where you cannot decrease your function any further and you have pot potentially reached your sort of uh, the amount of decrease you could you could get in this direction the optimal amount of decrease you could get in this direction and hence it's now this time to uh, to stop searching and f freeze the alpha right so so geometrically what the what, what's happening here is that if that well so let's say this this here was this here was phi dash uh, at 0 if that's your phi dash at 0 then what we are good, uh, what we are doing is again you're multiplying this by c2 so that will make that will uh, that will flatten the slope a little bit further so is we are um, so you are looking for a slope that is a little flatter than that uh, say say a slope like this and so the kind of so the desired slope looks a little bit like this maybe i should use a different color here so so this is what the desired slope looks like so the as as a result what hap what has happened is from the acceptable al the acceptable alpha range has now become from all the way from here till actually this sort of point till this point but then if you also impose the first condition if you impose both of these together the the acceptable range then becomes something like this this intermediate range right and from here it goes from here till till here so the green range that i have uh, that i have drawn here that becomes then the acceptable range of range of alpha so as you can see why this is the reason all this is complicated is because we are we have to sort of feel our way through uh, and and uh, and choose the right alpha by based on some sort of um, you know educated estimates or educated guesses about how the function is going to behave in the um, you know as we as we change the alpha right so so coming uh, put uh, to summarize we have uh, these are what are called these are the wolf conditions so, uh, so a sufficient decrease sufficient decrease or
right. So, a sufficient decrease or wolf condition is said to hold if, uh, uh, if alpha satisfies satisfies these two equations where where uh, where uh, c 1 and c 2 are bit have satis um, have this kind of inequality between them. Now, c 1 and c 2 are constants that are chosen uh, uh, in the, uh, that are fixed uh, they you do not vary them across iterations all right. So, these are uh, uh, the this uh, this is uh, yeah. So, this now, choosing th th it takes usually a bit of trial and error to figure out what the right values of C 1 and C 2 are, but any uh, C, C 1 and C 2 between that satisfy this are sufficient are, are all right for us. Now, there is a stronger version of these uh, of these wolf conditions in which the second one what are called strong wolf conditions. the stronger wolf the strong wolf condition in the strong wolf conditions you change this this here is replaced by so so let's call these equations w1 and w2 w1 holds and w2 replaced by replaced by the following which is you replace it by the absolute value instead of taking the gradient oh sorry I missed the transpose p k here yeah instead of simply taking the derivative you actually take the absolute value of it less than equal to c 2. Right. So, now in this case what happens is uh, the, uh, under the strong wolf conditions if it, uh, you uh, uh, the strong wolf conditions will if uh, will uh, are stronger in the sense that you are not we are uh, we are all we, we are not um, the, the difference is that we no longer allow the derivative to be uh, to be too positive right. So, we do not want uh, we so the derivative of of this uh, the the derivative at alpha uh, of of phi at alpha k should not be too positive. So, it, we do not allow for for instance uh, slopes where the yeah. So, say for example, a slope like this where the derivative is now is too positive we do not allow those sort of things. So, that even further constrains your uh, further constrains your choice of alphas. Uh, 